Hey, what's going on, folks? Welcome to another edition of the TKO Show here on TKOTalk.com. Glad you're back with us, and I'm glad to be back. And I'm glad to talk about a show that all of you know that is near and dear to my heart. If you listen to my interview with Susie back when I launched this little site a couple months ago, you'll know that I'm a huge MTV Challenge nut. And uh, I'm here with a fellow MTV Challenge nut, uh, my friend Andrew Kirk. You can follow him on Twitter at C-S-U-A-K-I-R-K. Does a um, spreecast, formerly a blog talk radio show, which I've appeared on once or twice. I will uh, put the links down in the description. But uh, let's welcome Kirk. Kirk, what's going on, man? Thanks for having me, man. Definitely great talking to you again. I haven't talked to you in a minute. How you been? Can't complain, man. Uh, you know, just grind it, as the kids say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to go through uh, this challenge cast here, uh, talk about MTV's The Challenge Free Agents, which begins this Thursday night, I believe. I think they changed the night, which was usually Wednesday, and uh, now it's it's Thursday. Yeah, let's talk about the rules first, though. I mean, I mean this challenge, I, I'm, I love this challenge already because we – Alliances get thrown out the window pretty much. Um, I watched this little video on iTunes the other day, and um, they can either have teams of four, teams of six, or on your own, or like partner challenges. And then elimination round is the the draw. I don't know if you saw that. What do you think about that? Yeah, the uh, the random draw, um, which is a bit of a toss up. I feel like they've done this before, where they they wrote down ballots. Uh, um, which is a little bit different because you can still vote people in, but it's, it, it lessens, I think, the ability to kind of go with the room, so to speak. Um, no, 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 what it is is they flip over a card, and if it's blank, they are safe, and then if the card says kill, they go into elimination with whoever the winner's put in. Yeah, there you go. I mean, it, it certainly, like you said, eliminates some of the uh, the – I think they, but I think they've done this for for the last few. I think is they've kind of cut down the ability for teams to re- have really strong alliances, like we saw, you know, a couple of years ago, and just you know weed out whoever these alliances wanted to put in there. You know, uh, most notably probably is uh, Fresh Meat Two, one of my favorite seasons actually, and, and the alliances uh, were like a huge part of that show. Was it was the kind of um, Wes versus Kenny alliances, and that was pretty much the whole dynamic of the show. Was that at first, it seemed like Wes was just going to dominate because he kept sending Kenny's alliance uh, members in, and then the tide quickly turned, and Kenny's alliance uh, kept <laughs> eliminating Wes's teams. Great, great season. Go back and watch it if you find it. But um, yeah, this dynamic certainly switches things up a bit, and it puts a emphasis on just being prepared and being the better competitor. And I think that's, you know, as a purist kind of fan, it, it definitely, I don't want to say it, it like levels the playing field because there's certainly guys that are better than others, but I think it gives, it gives the new, the new cast members, if anything, a little bit more of a chance. Um, people that haven't established themselves. Like I think of, of last year with, uh, with Jordan and Marlon, if they, if they were in this format, you know, a year ago, they, not that they, they did poorly at all, because they did really well, but they, they would have probably them. seen a lot less elimination rounds. And I see this season with a couple new, um, new faces. We got, uh, Johnny from real world Portland. Um, a couple other, a couple other people that haven't been on the show yet. And they're going to, more than likely go through, you know, the trial by fire, which we see all these rookies do. But with this with this format, obviously, you know, we could very well end up seeing, you know, these these powerful veterans like a Johnny Bananas or a CT, or I guess you could put even you know, put Frank and Zach in that category now since they've been on so many shows in a short time. Yeah. They're, they could – be right in there in the elimination rounds right away and get sent home first. I mean, it's. I just want. I just want to say this real quick though. I wish yeah. they would have waited a little bit longer to film this challenge because we don't have anybody from season twenty nine, Rural World Explosion, and I feel like there's gonna be a lot of good challenges coming from that season coming up for season twenty six. Like like Corey Wharton. Corey's absolutely amazingly athletic, and then a girl like Jenny, 
Just wish they would have waited a little bit longer. I think uh, Explosion came back like the 28th, and they filmed this challenge like the 16th of October. Yeah. Kind of, a, kind of a bummer. And, and last year, we actually got like the reverse dynamic to where they were filming uh, while Portland was going on, but they had Portland cast members. So that's certainly not, you know, I, when you first started saying that, that was the first thought that came into my head is they usually run these parallel, but that didn't, that didn't stop them last year um, because the filming cycles don't necessarily need to line up. But let's um just a few numbers first to get to get uh, out of the way. I always I like numbers. I'm a big fan. I always like to break them down. If you've heard some of the other uh, sports related podcasts I've ever done, I did a, a whole NBA podcast where I talked about the top ten players in, my, in the league, and I had a shit ton of numbers on that podcast. Not going to be as many here. Just a few to be aware of. This is the 25th season of the challenge, which is, uh, you know, it's, a, it's an anniversary worth note. Five. I yep. mean, WrestleMania 30 is tomorrow, so I mean. I know. It's, it's, almo- it's almost uh, parallel. The challenge 25. There you go. Um, which is good. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad they didn't go with the format I thought they were going to go with. I thought they were going to go with X's 2, which is probably going to be season 26 because of the real world explosion. Mm-hmm. So they can get, so they can get enough of them on that, on that season. But. Yeah. I, I, I like it. I think it's definitely going to be uh, all the all the all the fans want individual elimination rounds. We haven't seen that since Cutthroat. I think we've seen partner yeah. elimination rounds season after season after season. So and I mean, this it's going to be one on one. You go home by yourself. So yeah. I mean, I love it. Speaking of which, this is the first. Um, you know. In theory, it's the first every man for himself challenge since the Duel 2, which was five years ago, back in 2009. And also another little um, tidbit, which I found interesting, is as I was going through this cast earlier, was that 16 of the 28 cast members were on last season. So that's just something that I'm probably going to talk about quite a bit as we run through here, is that... There's a lot of similar names that we're seeing. And every time a cast list comes out or, you know, uh, Bevmo or whatever that site is starts, you know, talking about spoilers and people go on there, you know, challenge addicts go on there and start seeing, you know, the rumors for who could potentially be on the next season. You always look at who's going to be on there. You always look at, you know, the names that haven't been on in a while, names that, you know, are fan favorites like, you know, um, Johnny or Evan or Kenny or Derek or whoever, CT, and these get, you know, pointed out. But we're seeing a lot of deja vu here with the last season. And um, I guess we can, you know, talk about that as we go through, you know, whether that's that's good or not. Um, I'm always someone that likes to see new, you know, maybe not new faces in terms of, you know, uh, people that haven't been on the show, but new faces in terms of people that we haven't seen in a while, which we do get a few of those, but probably not. I think enough. I think more so than not this season than we've done than we did last last season. I don't even remember if we had any like come back out of nowhere cast members. Yeah, it seems like last the last season. three three or so seasons have been you know pretty much the same core group of people. And um, that core is, is not is not bad by any means, but it just you know you want to maybe maybe it's just me and I but I know it's not because I see the reaction on Twitter and so forth um, is that people want you know their their fan favorites and while we're getting CT and Johnny Bananas and a couple people coming back like Laurel we're not getting um, well I mean the ones that we watched over the years Tim are getting older I mean I listen to podcasts with, with my friend Bus Drivers are out and. Uh, Kenny said he was turning 31, so I mean he's probably unfortunately. I hope I hope they give him one more shot, but he, I think he's unfortunately moved on from this and just doing what he's doing. I don't know. I mean, it, first of all, he's th- he might be 31, but he's he's probably in the best shape of his life. If you follow Absolutely. if you follow him on Instagram, I mean the dude is uh, he just opened up a um, a CrossFit training center. He's constantly training. He's like a personal trainer now. And, you know, that's that's probably a huge business opportunity that he probably doesn't want to leave behind. So that's, you know, more, of, I think, more of a reason than he just doesn't want to do it. Um, I think he'll, he has another run or two in him. And uh, I think it would actually be good for his business if he were, you know, just to get out there one more time for some, you know, maybe some, some new faces and yeah. uh, just expose a few more people to that uh, to that. 
You want another fact too, Sam? Yeah. Nobody from Real World of Austin is on this show. Wow, that's probably the first time in a while. Crazy. I think the first time in a while. If you go back from all the way from the first crash meet, I mean, there was everybody on it. The Duel 2 almost didn't have anybody from Austin, but then Nehemiah came in. But, like, man, maybe. I mean, I, I mean, this is very wishful thinking, but I want a Real World Reunited season like they, First Vegas had and have Austin cast do it, but they got to give Johanna a lot of money. Yeah, that. right. She'd probably, be the, she'd probably be the only hurdle, though, to be fair. Yeah. I love that season. That was, like, one of the first – that was one of – that's probably one of, like, only five or six seasons that I've watched, like, from front to back. So uh, the, I would love that. One, though, man, and I, have sp- I spoke to seven out of the 12. Uh, it was, def- was definitely a good one. I mean, I, somebody tweeted me yesterday saying, oh, why are the ratings going? And I feel like people that – just, just like the challenge, people that grew up watching the show are over it, you know? For sure, and they they want to see... Not the challenge. Know, not the challenge. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, the format uh, until this year hasn't changed, and uh, this year certainly stirred some pot up, uh, some stuff up in the pot, or whatever that phrase goes. Anyway, um, one more little, I guess, factoid um, that was dropped on the podcast I did with Susie was that she was contacted for this season. I haven't talked to her um, that in depth since then. Um, just, you know, a tweet back here or there. But I'm, I'm interested to see how that plays out because they, they clearly tried to contact some of these uh, fan favorites and I don't want to say older cast members because that might be a little offensive. But, um, <laughs> you know, um, veterans, I guess, let's say, from, from years gone by. So they, they, MTV clearly and Buna Murray clearly have tried to get some of these uh, veteran cast members, but for whatever reason, we could uh, hypothesize those maybe some other time. But let's talk about the ones that did show up, and let's talk about, I guess let's get the females out of the way first. Um, no, Uruguay, Uruguay yeah, where it's being filmed. That's I mean, true. Good. I mean t- Tim, Tim, I had no idea... Yeah, your argument was even a country till the 2010 World Cup. <laughs> like yeah. I saw them play, I think I think they were playing the USA, and I was like, okay, okay, where the heck is that from? Yes, South but, uh, South America, South American country. Um, that's pretty much all I know about it. Yeah, it is bordered by Argentina to the west and Brazil to the north and the east, with the Atlantic Ocean to the south and southeast, and it's home to 3.3 million people, according to Wikipedia. I knew you were reading that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no, I do. I'm not an expert on Uruguay by any means. Okay. Yeah, so, but but before we talk about the cast real quick, um, I'm I'm definitely excited to see how beautiful this country is. I mean, the first rivals we had in Buenos Aires and Patagonia, and Patagonia was beautiful. I'm betting this one's just going to be just as amazing to to look behind as far as the challenge goes, and I bet all of them enjoyed it. Yeah, I'm sure they have uh, awesome bodies of water for them to be uh, suspended over. What's the what's the over under on the amount of challenges involving being suspended over water? I'll put it at six and a half. I saw one. I saw one on the trailer. For uh, sure. I'm guessing. My, my guess it's a trivia challenge because they like throwing people in water for wrong answers. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I would say there's at least at least five suspended over water challenges. So uh, I take the under, but not by much. <laughs> okay. Got all the numbers and little factoids out of the way. Let's get into the brass tacks and talk um, competitors. Well, I guess we'll go alphabetical order since that's where um, everyone has enlisted. Start with the, the ladies. Uh, Anissa makes a return. She seems to be one of the only kind of old school, for lack of a better term, um, mem- cast members that keeps making appearances. So she uh, must have a lot going on in her world. That's sarcasm? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, like, the very first challenge I watched him, she was on it. Battle of the Sexes won in Jamaica. So, I mean, and that was back in 2003, so that's 11 years later. Like, geez. Yeah, she's, she's been around in more ways than one. Um, and I, I don't know what it is about her that keeps them bringing her back, like, no diss to her. I think I've said this in one form or another, you know, whether it was written or on a podcast or wherever, but, you know, she just, I don't know what keeps bringing her back other than she keeps saying yes, so she's not, like, a bad competitor, but I would say she's very 
you know, middle of the road, um, especially nowadays with, you know, how seriously these, these girls take the show. It's not like back in the day where you had, you know, girls like basically quitting halfway through challenges all the time. You know, this is a, a pretty serious group, I would say, from, from what I know of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think she'll be, you know, middle of the road. She'll put up a fight for sure, but it won't be much more than that. Well, just like just like the duel Tim, the first the two duels that she was on, she made it. She was she was third in both of them. So honestly, I mean, if somebody wins, do they throw her in? I seriously doubt it. I think she'd have to go into into one of the draws and get and get put in. I think because I mean, she's definitely the biggest one there as yeah. far as uh, weight distribution goes. Yeah, her and Laurel but, definitely. But yeah, I'm I'm with you on that. I mean, I'm. I have nothing against Anissa. She seems like a cool person to chill with, but I'm just, I'm kind of over her. Yeah. I just want, want her to say say peace out to the challenges already. Yeah, and I, and and she's like you said, she's definitely not going to be a name that people call out, but she's not also someone that is going to be like really freaked out about going up against like Emily or, you know, probably Laurel will or, so, you know, some of these other girls. All right, let's keep it moving. Cause we got 28 names to go through. Uh, Camilla, crazy old Brazilian Camilla finds herself, uh, I guess in a bit of a home field advantage being in, in South, uh, South America. But, uh, you know, I think Camilla is, is a sneaky competitor. Like, I don't think she's awesome. Like, I don't think she's in the top, Actually, looking at this category, she pro- looking at the cast, you might be in the top five girls right now in this uh, on this cast. So maybe she's a little maybe she's a little less sneaky than I give her credit for. But she always puts up a fight, even if she's just going insane on Big Easy or whoever that was in that elimination round, and yeah. uh, blaming for him for that. But you know, she's uh, she's feisty and still insane. So. The entertainment factor is there. Um, you never know when she's going to all of a sudden have a crazy Johnny Bananas fit again. That prospect is there. Honestly, Tim, I didn't like Camilla that much till last season. Like, I, I, I feel mm-hmm. like Battle of Seasons, I couldn't stand her. I mean, she went off on my boy, Brandon, who we'll get to in a little bit. Um, she obviously slipped out at Big Easy. I mean, Big Easy deserved it, but still. Um Honestly, I didn't like her last season. I felt like last season she she seemed like a very likable cast member, and I was trying to get her on my podcast desperately. It never worked out. But I don't know. Maybe maybe it's her turning blonde that makes me like her on the show. <laughs> maybe. Um, mellows her out a little. I'm not sure. But always a, a live wire. Maybe that's probably love, love her cast picture, though. Yeah, I mean, she's a, she's a good-looking girl and uh, very uh, always has the ability to have a random hookup and then all of a sudden want to murder someone in the same night. So that prospect alone, if we're doing like a, a you know, if this was like the NFL draft and we're like ranking prospects, she has a, a high ceiling for entertainment. So yeah. let's keep going. Uh, one of my personal favorites, uh, Crazy Old Cara Maria. Uh, back again. She seems to be on every one of these. She's um, an original this time. She's not a replacement. That's true. She's uh, here from the beginning. She actually got time to prepare. Um, I mean, I'm excited. It says here on her MTV profile that Car Maria arrives in Uruguay in the best shape of her life, but believes her mental outlook is keeping her from taking first place. She, know, she elaborates, I know physically I can do anything, but mentally I second-guess myself. It's almost like I'm afraid to win. <laughs> And uh, maybe she's got maybe she's got her stuff together this time. I know uh, in following her on Instagram, I don't know if it came. I think it came post challenge. She um, decided to move to Montana to be with Abram. So maybe that. I don't that's know. A cra- that's a crazy one, isn't he? Yeah, uh, they've certainly got a uh, a bond in that department. But maybe I don't know if like that transition was already on the verge of happening when she was on the show, but. If she does have that relationship as a foundation, sometimes that really helps people um, in the show. It just kind of keeps them grounded and it keeps them focused, keeps them kind of with their eye on the prize. So if that's the case, then maybe it's it's Carmen Reyes, uh time to finally 
to finally shine, and she does have her BFF Laura on the show with her, which probably can't hurt. Um, so I think both- I'm looking at I'm looking at the weakest thing. Sorry to cut you off there. No, most con- most consecutive seasons, she now ties Sarah Rice of 25. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, seven really. <laughs> Uh, and I don't, I'm not complaining about either of them. So yeah. I really, that, that's a stat that I, uh, enjoy. But, um, even if it's a fake stat, but it's, uh, I think bold prediction, random bold prediction. I should have like a sound effect for that. Car Maria will be in the finale. I don't know if it's a three person finale, a two person finale, a four person finale, but for the females, she will be there. And uh, I think this is her uh, this is her best shot. I think she's it, finally on the right depend- team. I think it depends on who they put her at in elimination with. I mean, as far as this cast goes, just looking down the list, I I think a lot of girls can possibly take her out. I hate to say, I hate to break it to you, man. <laughs> um, like, I mean, I'm looking down the list. I mean, out of the ones we talked to, I mean, obviously, I think both the girls that we already talked about already could be her. Yeah, Anissa and Camilla. And then the one we'll get to next, um, depending on what it is. Actually, I think she probably could beat Devin. God bless Devin. I love her. But um, I don't know. It's, it's definitely tough. I mean, I mean, she has a season where she goes into, was it three elimination rounds with Cook? Yeah, or maybe more, maybe four. Or two, or two and a half because they, they didn't have that whole electric shock. Elimination round. Yeah, I guess. I mean, that, I I would still count that because I guess they were still preparing to go into elimination round. But uh, yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, she won them all, but um, Battle of Seasons, Battle of the Axes, she went out. Battle of Seasons, she went out really early because Freshman didn't have a chance from the beginning. Uh, Battle of the Axes, Abram surprisingly lost a tie. I I'm st- I still can't believe that tie beat Abram. Um. I don't know. She, it's, it's very up and down with her. I mean, she she has seasons where she can go all the way to the finals, then she has seasons where she goes home early. And I think this might be, I don't know, this might be one that if if she if she gets into the draw, depending on who she goes against, um, I feel like we might see her go halfway. I don't know. Could be, and that's the uh, the wild card with the sort of wild card elimination rounds um <laughs> uh no pun intended there but man w- wouldn't it be crazy if like you know car maria got last place for whatever reason maybe she disqualified i don't know and then laurel came up laurel came up on the uh on the last random draw oh that's right they i keep pick, getting they, that confused they, they pick somebody yeah and, uh, one of the guys on i don't know if you ever listen to after buzz uh steve the steamer was uh, I talked to him on Twitter? He was like, "Oh, I'm kind of ticked off about that last place thing." And I'm, I mean, it's, it, I mean, I can see why. I mean, last place should automatically go in the elimination round, but I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna be fun to watch. Yeah, it's that that is a, an interesting dynamic. Now that I keep thinking about it, I know I've said that like eight times, but uh, I'm just kind of trying to process it in my brain. So let's uh, let's move on here to the aforementioned uh, Devin. Um, who returns after a, a brief uh, brief hiatus, I guess you could call it. Um, she looks great, I got to say. She does. Looks she, like she lost some weight, man. It, yeah, it she looks in, awesome. in good shape, and uh, maybe she uh, spent less time at the, uh, the, the, sh- the mall and more time at the gym, which is always, uh, always going to be helpful here. And, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's always hard to peg when someone comes in like, like last season, was it last season with Tyree, and all of a sudden he looked like really jade up. And oh, Tyree. I mean, I've always been a Tyree supporter despite his, his shortcomings. Um, so maybe I was a little bit biased, but you know, I, I looked at him and I'm like, all right, he's finally focused, he's finally in this. You know, this is going to be his time, and then it wasn't. So it's, uh, I mean, especially with this challenge, it's all about the luck of the draw, really. So um, I, I think she she's. As much as I love the girl, and I'm hoping to get her on this season, I think she's gone early. early unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, it kills me to say that because Devin Simone is awesome. I mean, if you if you listen to her on my podcast or her on AfterBuzz, 
she is one of the most hilarious girls. On, she she's probably the funniest girl on the show, especially since Paula's uh, knocked up and all. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Paul. Kudos, uh, Connecticut's own. Congrats. But, um, she, uh, I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, really, this could, this could just depend on, like, how long you stay. I'm just. What how, white guy do you think she goes for? Oh, that's, uh, that's a much better question than what I was that's about to ask. Question. Um. Does she go for Johnny from Portland? Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if Johnny's into that. Because we know, we know. Kahada has someone. Yeah, that seems to be already, that seems to already be locked up. And uh, if you just follow him on Twitter, I think that's pretty obvious who that ends up being. Um, I don't know. I don't see a standout right away. Uh, maybe Isaac. He seems like he'd be a weird guy into that kind of thing. Oh, Isaac. Um, we'll talk about him a little bit later. But yeah, that'll that'll be my pick. I'll go I'll go Isaac, but you it's know, an er, it's an early exit for Miss Simone, though, unfortunately. Could very well be, but you know, if you just get along with people, like if you have friends in the house that you know, even even back like on the duel two, um, it showed that like if you had that one person that had your back, that that's going to take you you know farther than it it could otherwise. So um, we'll see how we'll see how it goes. And I mean, if she's rubbing people the wrong way and, and annoying people and being loud and obnoxious, which could kind of play in, like, against someone like uh, Camilla, who we've already talked about. You know, people are going to get sick of you and want you out early, so they're just not going to, they're just going to all vote you in. I can't wait to talk about this next one, though, man. Yeah, here we go. She's been uh, gone so freaking long. The return of, of uh, Twitter favorite Emily Fitzpatrick. Um, I'll, I'll, let you, I'll, I'll let you go first, since you I feel uh, like had her on your show and... Well, actually, I, I haven't yet, but oh, well, I'm gonna tr- I'm I've, gonna try. I've tried very try. very hard. <laughs> I've had I've had a lot of people from Cancun. I mean, I've had Jasmine, CJ, and Derek, but not her yet. But um, I mean, we see in uh, one of those little promos that they play in commercials between in MTV shows. I'm here for some action. <laughs> and then her quote in the end of Cutthroat: "You win some and you lose some, but there's nothing better than getting some." <laughs> I mean, it, it's certainly, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to be honest here. It's, uh, she's here for, she's here for looks. Uh, Ooh. Um, no, this to her. Look, I, I, I got, I got, I got to read this quick on the MTV website. Emily quick, quickly sets her sights on a newly single guy, but discovers that on the challenge, competition isn't limited to the playing field. Watch for Emily to make a new rival when they clash over one guy's affections. I mean, doesn't doesn't shock me. Um, who's like who's like the most eligible bachelor on the show? Um, I'd probably say Jordan. Jordan I or Jor- I don't think it's Jordan. Though. Dustin. Dustin. It's got to be Dustin. The new, you know, new newly Zito, single. Newly Zito was single. making out with somebody in the trailer. So yeah, that's my pick. He's newly single. He's out there. He's uh, gonna make the gonna make the rounds. And uh, Dustin and Jordan are going to clean up this on this season, and not in the competition, if you know what I mean. All right. Um, I, 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 th- I think she goes a while though. I feel like I feel like she was definitely. I don't know if she's well liked enough. She left extremely early on the first challenge, kind of throw, which was yeah. She was like out. the first one gone. Yeah. Um, but I, th- I think she li- I think she's going to last a while. She's not going to win, but she's going to last. Half, at least halfway. All right, there's before, your before the midseason teaser. There's your first uh, bold prediction. Um, can we just like put Jasmine and John A in like one in one person? Because I feel like they're the same person. Like they're always on the show together. They're you know both tiny. And um, we're talking we're talking about people who do so many challenges in a row. This is Jasmine's. Fifth one in a row. Yeah. And she's th- been doing them since 2011. I think John A is, if she hasn't done all of the same ones, she's done four out of the four out of the five. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess got, there's that I, dynamic. I, I got massive love for Jasmine. I mean, I've had her on three seasons in a row now. She's, she's entertaining. Gonna be, gonna be four. She's, she says it like it is, and she has a new enemy now. And I'm wondering if they're gonna clash in the house in a car and Maria. And well, she has another. She has another one that you've probably seen with the Twitter beef, but she and Kara 
We're on a spree cast, not mine, but a different one. MTV spree cast one night, and Kara was upset, and Jasmine just went off on her. So, I don't know. We could see those two in the elimination round. I think that would be fun. That would. I mean, they're both, you know, five foot nothing. Um, Jasmine, I love the girl with the death, though, Tim. I, I mean, this format does not favor her whatsoever. No. And um, I, th- I think yeah. the only way she goes a little bit further is if they uh, – I was going to say if they cut out the rookies, but there's really only one now that I'm looking at it. Well, two. Uh, no, one. Okay, yeah, one. Um I forgot that uh, Jessica was on the last season for, like, an episode. I'm single. I'm going to have a – this is from Jasmine's thing. I'm single. I'm going to have a little fun, bit of fun, so that's what I'm going to do right now. <sighs> All right, so who's her most likely hookup? I sure as hell hope it's not Swift. Oh, that, that's that's it. That's, <laughs> that's a that, lock. That would be terrible. They're both – isn't Swift also like five foot three? So like Swift, Swift's a good dude. Don't get me wrong, but that would be a terrible hookup. Which is why it needs to happen. That's why it's probably why. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Which could, well, to be honest with you, could could Jasmine get any worse? As far as like, I mean, we're both Tiger fans, but could she get could she downgrade any more than she did with Tyree? Yeah. Um, Swift, probably. Um, if they brought back uh, that other dude, what's his name, Nick Brown, that would be a, a downgrade. Hey, that's um, a great. That's a great. He has a great song. Nick Brown. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he does. It's, it's it's very. It's it's number one on my iTunes play. There you go. Um, <laughs> Nick Brown online on Twitter. So um, John A's still got that dynamic with Zach, where you know they were together, now they're not. But we kind of saw that last year. It really wasn't that big a deal. Um, Zach's tied up. Why isn't uh, Zach's uh, girl? What's what's her name? Why hasn't she been back? Well, debut, you mean? I don't know. I thought she was one on one on one, on one season, but maybe I'm wrong. Oh, you're talking about you're talking about Ashley from San Diego. Yeah, I just talking about his current one, the one from Nola. Oh, there's a new one. I thought I didn't even realize there was a new one. Ashley Feldman from Nola. She's like oh, she's like six foot. Wow. She's Good for him. I'm looking at, I'm looking at John A's picture. That hair has to be fake. <laughs> I would not doubt it. I mean, she's. I mean, uh, she's 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 commenting about her weave about her weave getting wet on one of the episodes of Rifle. Yeah. The hair. Okay. So hair has to be fake. Yeah. Confirmed. All right. Um. I think she goes home early. Yeah. Well, I, early to middle, like like um like Kenny said um. Uh, my friend by Standard Draft Podcast, she does have a good political game. Like she can she yeah. find she finds the most attractive guy in her opinion to hook up with, which was back in Battle of the Seasons. That got her to this to almost a finale. She could be a and candidate then, for a CT hookup for sure. I don't think so. I think CT hooks up with somebody he's already hooked up with. I don't know. You never know. Um well, well I guess we'll we'll Keep that going as we go along here. Um, Jemmy, uh, she's back. I don't know how to feel about Jemmy because she does have some funny one-liners. This is, I think, is this her first challenge without Knight? Or it seems that way. <laughs> seems like they're always attached to hip. Um, yeah, but yeah, it is without Knight. She's uh, she's funny and she's a bit of a mess and a former Division One athlete, which is shocking. I think she's another one that kind of uh, is probably a little bit better than it seems. In but, lacrosse or what? Yeah, maybe. Maybe like, uh, like I don't know, uh, what's that thing called? Curling. Like some, some eh, maybe they probably don't have that in the cell. Um, maybe like, I don't know, maybe it was like bull riding or something. Maybe they have that uh, back where she's from. But um, I feel like I've said that a lot. Honestly, with Jemmy, I mean, I, I mean, not she, much seems, to say. she seems very likable. She has her own boutique thing, katygirlboutique.com, plugging that for you. Um, but without Knight, she, I, I, I think, unless she starts something with, with one of the girls, I think we won't see much of her. No, and for looking at her picture, she looks in better shape. Um, I'm, I'm not like an expert in her physique, but. She looks a lot better in this picture than she has on the show in the past, uh, at least to me, or someone that doesn't pay a whole lot of attention. I mean, she's won a couple challenges. 
she's won a couple of like individual challenges to him as well as a couple of eliminations with uh she won that in insane games. That's true. I remember that. And she won she won it I think she won one challenge in rivals two and then she won two eliminations in rivals two, but that was because she had a good partner. Yeah. She's on, her own, on her own, I don't know if it's I I feel like she's been on enough challenges to last longer than she should. Yeah, she'll I probably mean, float on the radar. I mean, she has some of the guys like like Leroy. Um, I don't know how her and Zach are. Maybe maybe somebody like Jordan would be able would be able to keep her around longer than expected. Yeah, she's a candidate for sure to kind of fly under the radar and just kind of slip by without having to do much. I think she's paid her she's paid her dues to the point where she's been in a lot of elimination rounds and now usually when that happens like Were you rooting for her and Leroy to hook up on Rivals too? Um, I was I didn't really have a rooting interest either way. Uh, I always like my boy Leroy to get it. So I mean, if he's getting it, then kudos to him. Uh, I think that could be re-sparked uh, once again because I don't think there's too many. Uh, actually, I don't know about that. There might be a few more um, Leroy potential hookups here that I'm giving them credit for. Um, let's go to the next one, I guess, and that's Jessica from Portland, who was on that one episode of Rivals. She was, on, she was on two, actually. Oh, okay. Well, that's only... I think that's only because they stretched the first elimination to the second show, but... <laughs> I'll, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, if you don't mind, I'll take this away first, because, I mean, I've talked to her, like, about ten times there you go. between her real world and her talent season. I think she might be first up for next week. Um... I can see why people can't stand this girl. I mean, she, she's, she has this persona of, oh, I'm the perfect Christian girl. I'm going to stay celibate. And I, I have a good feeling she will, but she, she ha she tried to play that persona in Portland. It didn't work. I mean, she ended up put, I don't know if she and a, a what was that tall dude's name? The Rick, the local Tyler. I don't think they hooked up, but, she I, I, she annoys a lot of people very easily, and I can see why. But deep down, she's definitely a sweetheart. And uh, uh, let me read this real quick. I don't think people see me as a threat this time because I didn't last very long in the previous challenge. I have to play it cool and then just, bam, hit them, hit them with it. Although she claims not look for romance in the house, Jessica is all smiles when she makes an instant love connection. Interesting, interesting. Um, she'd be one of those girls, like, in real life, like, if I were to meet her, that would just drive me insane. I, I, I feel like she's one of the ones that you, that you're, that you can't stand to. Oh, definitely not, because I can tell you right now, it, it would be, I would, I would chase her for, like, a couple, like, a month, and then it would ultimately go nowhere. It, like, she is the prototypical type to where she'd be like super flirty at first hook me in i'm a, I'm like hook line and sinker and it just ends up going nowhere and then she like just oh. puts the wall up <laughs> she just puts the wall up and then I, I get i get like i waste all of this time for nothing um so i mean that's kind I, of a, that's kind of a backhanded compliment but yeah i it, hope she goes past episode three i hope she makes it further than last time but She's not going to go that far. Yeah, not, not quite. Um, I love it. I love the girl to death, though. She's awesome. Yeah, I didn't really watch much of Portland. I watched a little bit here and there. Um, how was she like? Like, how was she liked in the house? Because she does have a couple cast members, form, uh, fellow cast members here. Well, she and I obviously were cool. Who we'll get to in a bit, and I can't wait to talk about her. Um, she got into it with Johnny, as well as Jordan. Okay. As well as Anastasia, who was her rival's two partner. So she's got she's it, got it, one it, ally. It necessarily wasn't her fault. I mean, she like I, like I said, her personality I think I think is an acquired taste. Um, you either love her, or you either, either hate her. One of my Twitter followers, I don't know, if she, I think she follows you as well. Naya had a blog post the other day saying that she actually, because of my spreecast, is starting to kind of like her now. So I mean, I. I'm glad she, I got her got her to switch sides as far as how she felt about Jessica. Yeah, there you go. 
All right, so let's uh, let's go a little faster here um, through these these last few. Um, Latoya, Latoya, Latoya Jackson, not the sister of Michael Jackson, um, different one, who I'm just looking at for the first time now, and I think she's a strong candidate for a Leroy can get that. Uh, so I, mean, awesome. I don't, I don't I, know. I, I, I wouldn't be against that whatsoever. Um. Have you have you have you have you heard her talk? No. She is. I, lo- I love the Virginia boys. Like, <laughs> it, 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 it's awesome. Her yeah, accent. Yeah. Her accent is awesome. You, Tim, what you got to do after this? After after we finish this uh, podcast, re, uh, go to the I love uh, YouTube search. I love Mayo, and then somebody from a a YouTuber uh, did a whole bunch of like one liners from uh, rural old St. Thomas, and a bunch of them were. Majority of it was the Latoyas, and it's hilarious. You'll laugh. You'll laugh. I still watch it. I'm probably gonna watch it after this, but um, <laughs> I can see her going a while. Um, I think she wins at least one elimination round. I think she's. Uh, I think a lot of the cast members are gonna underestimate her. I mean, if you look at that cast, you obviously think Laura is the most athletic. Marie's probably gonna stay a while because of politics. But Latoya, I think, is going to surprise some people. All right, there you go, sleeper pick. Um, let's just keep going. Laurel's next. Um, she's probably the person I'm most excited seeing uh, come back. Um, always entertaining, you know, good-looking, awesome competitor. She's got the triple threat, and uh, glad to see her back. Um, I don't. I mean, I'm sure she's in, in good shape. Why? Why wasn't Emily Strom called for this challenge, man? I don't know, man. I, think I, want, she's, I, I mean, if she was on the challenge, it would be her. It would be her and Laurel. I know. As top two, and we would be able to see the best of the best. The dream I mean, matchup. There's, there's no more Evelyn. I, from what I hear, Evelyn's retired, and I, I wouldn't mind her not being back. But I would right. love to see Laurel and Emily just go at it. Yeah, you and me both. The more ways than one. Um, she's the one to beat, but, though. That, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to make it short and sweet. Laurel's the one to beat. Yeah, I agree. And I guess the big question is, is uh, does she break the streak of having three second place finishes? And I mean, that's that's not bad by any means. She's going home with money in her pocket every time. But uh, can she finally get over the hump now that she's not, you know? Uh, more than more than likely. She doesn't. She doesn't have the the chain of a partner around her ankle anymore. And I think. Uh, I think she's, I think she's the favorite, like you said. And if I had a gun to my head, if I had to put money on it, I would, uh, I would pick her to win in terms of the the, the girls. Um, there, there's nothing that questions me about Laurel. Even if she does hook up, even if she does have some sort of outburst, it never affects her performance. And uh, I think that's, uh, I think that's the, the the factor here, the big X factor. So good to see her back. Um, Nani's back. For what seems like the ninth challenge in a row, not totally mad at it because she's not hard on the eyes, and uh, she seems to have a uh, new guy in her sights. She's from Georgia. Yeah, she um, has. She's had some some little flings here or there, and uh, had some outbursts, which I if think. You're t- if you're t- we we're talking about downgrades early, if you want to talk about an upgrade. And, I mean, we kind of spoiled it a little bit, but not really. The one that she hooks up with on this challenge is a huge upgrade from Adam Royer. Well, to be fair, there's not, I don't think anyone that is a da- is not an upward trajectory from Adam Royer. Yeah, I was talking, I was doing a real world recap um, with uh, my co-host Morgan McAdam. Um, and we were ta- I, was, I was talking about, uh, it was either Jay or Thomas, and I was like, one of one of them remind. I think it was Day. He reminded me a lot of Adam Roy. And I brought up. Um, you you watched Vegas, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. You remember the first episode when his girl, when his a uh, seventeen or eighteen year old girlfriend called. Yeah. And he was like, "I'll call you when I want to call you. Yeah. Don't call. Don't call me. It's just gonna get annoying." But anyways, that's enough of Adam for this podcast. That's enough Not, Adam for probably the year of twenty fourteen. Nani, I think she's. I think. I think she goes. Almost to the end or to the end. I think she's definitely, I think she's definitely one of the top ones on this one. I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, she's got, she's got, um, 
If she can keep her te- if she can keep her composure in check, I think. Yeah, she can. I mean, she does seem to have some allies here, um, but there's also some people that don't like her. I would imagine. Um, so, I think she's got more allies than enemies. So we'll see. Um, I would tend to agree with you if I had to ch- if I had to choose between. And now that she's kind of bitten, like I talked about before with Jemmy, I mean, she's been through enough of these that. She could be one of those that fly under the radar in terms of the game, not you know, not in terms of screen time, just in terms of elimination rounds and you know, winning or losing. She'll probably be in the middle of the pack. That smile is to die for. <laughs> Indeed, you can't argue with that. Um, we got two. Let's, more. let's we got let's, two or three more. Let's leave the newcomer for last. Um, let's talk Teresa, who. Um, I know you're very fond of, so I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you go. I'll let you go first on this one. I don't. I don't remember how many new guests I had last season, but by far Teresa was my favorite one. She seemed like such a sweetheart. She has a history of hooking up with the top dogs, though. I mean, she hooked up with the weddings man. after she turned her back. Yeah, and don't I, remind me of that because that yeah, makes yeah. me think so much less of her. <laughs> Ginger. Um, and then jaked up with Roy Lee on the last challenge, so I think we see another hookup in her side with who I think if Emily doesn't hook up with Destin Zio, I think Teresa does. Yeah, and I, I would think that whoever doesn't, whatever the two doesn't, goes after Jordan, because uh, Jordan's done pretty well for himself on these games. Uh, oh, I don't, th- I don't think so with Teresa, because Jordan was the one that screwed her in Rivals, remember? Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah. We'll see. We'll as see what happens. As far as how she goes in the challenge, I think she's going to go. I think she makes it further than she's done in the past couple ones. Yeah. Well, the past one, because she, the past two rivals, I mean, she went home. Episode six and then episode three or four. I think I think she goes farther. I think so, too. She seems to be someone that gets, uh, gets the, the anvil around her ankle in terms of partners quite a bit, um, gets the raw deal in terms of, um, alliances and and I think in a, in a free for all game I think she stands a good shot. Um, I always enjoy the fact I always enjoy the little fun fact that she's the she was a walk on um, for like Michigan State or something. Um, Wisconsin. Yeah. Okay. Well, Final Four team then even you know probably looks better right now. But uh, kudos cool. legs. Yeah. Kudos. Uh, kudos to Teresa. Keep. Keep showing up on these uh, on these shows and making us happy. Yeah, she um, was gone for quite a while, man. I know it sucked. Yeah, her pres her presence is felt once more. And the uh, the final female that we're going to talk about the hur- the hurricane. Do we have to? Hurricane Naya. Um, I literally like the. She was probably ninety percent of the reason why I uh, I tuned into Portland for the few episodes that I did just because of. The legend of Hurricane Naya. Um, she created uh, just her, the first sentence of her MTV profile. I think kind of sums it up. Hurricane Naya was last seen wreaking havoc on the real world Portland, where she terrorized her roommates. That pretty much sums it up. And uh, she's it. You know, if, if there was like a challenge draft of like people that hadn't been on and like. Like, if Buna Murray had, like, seven people, and they were just like, all right, we're going to draft people that we want to see on the show that haven't been on and, you know, either haven't been on or haven't been on in, in five years, let's say. Let's say this hypothetical draft happened. Guarantee Hurricane Naya is the Andrew Luck, Jadavion Clowney of that draft. She's going number mm-hmm. one. She is a powerhouse in terms of challenge personality. I don't know how well she'll do athletically. Probably not so good. And now uh, I kind of disagree with you about there a little bit on that one too. I mean, she's uh, I know from talking to her. I talked to her once. She played a volleyball where I don't remember, but um, I don't know she she's very athletic and she's very um. Oh man, I can't I can't wait to see her go off her body and I'm hoping that somebody is uh somebody that she's had a little bit of Twitter beef with uh, Jasmine. That would be fun. That would be uh, all all combined 10 feet of that fight would be awesome. And um, I think she goes home early just because people are not going to like her and they're going to vote her in. Plus, she's a rookie. People, Doesn't... I think, are going to un... I think they're going to un... Uh, they're going to miss 
stretcher because about her Portland season, and they're not going to give her a chance to get to know her. They're going to be like, oh, we saw you on your season. You were definitely a crazy one talking crap about Jordan's hand, talking uh, talking crap about the crap, literally. And uh, I think people are just going to – I think people are going to misjudge her about, about her Portland season. They're not going to give her a fair chance. That's, that's probably fair, but, uh, you know, there's only so much that they can go off of, so – I don't entirely blame them for that. I, I think no matter how long she on it, though, I feel like she's going to get a little time. It's a definite possibility. So that does it for the, the ladies. Um, I think we both pegged Laurel as our favorites, and um, I think we could a good uh, breakdown there. So let's go to the guys. Who's your, uh, final, who's your final four for the girls? If I had to pick a final four, it would be Laurel, uh, Car Maria, um, now it gets tough. Hmm. Let's go Teresa, and let's go Camilla, I guess. I'm going Laurel, Nani, um, Teresa, and, uh, I think not, I think not on for the final, just because people don't like her. Mm-hmm. Or else I think she'd go far. Oh, shoot. <laughs> that last pick is always the toughest. I think I'm going to toss it between John Nay. Probably not. Maybe. I don't know. John Nay and Camilla. Maybe Car Maria. All right. So I just gave you six and eight. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think it's going to be a good one for the ladies. Um, I don't know. We'll have to see, man. Let's let's go to the gentleman. I want I, I want to start in this first one. All right, the first my, one, my boy, Brandon Nelson, frequent uh, guest appear appearer appearance, uh, frequent appearer on the uh, Andrew Kirk Network. I'm going to call it. Oh yeah. <laughs> do, do, How does he do? Do, do? The dude runs this up. He's on a club tour in Las Vegas. I mean, he's he's living the dream. I mean, he li- he lives in Vegas with Leroy and his buddy and his uh and Fresh Me Too competitor who we've never seen, we haven't seen since, uh, nor. Um, the 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 dude is definitely I I feel like, and I mean, I've talked to a bunch of other people and I've heard a bunch of pie. I feel like I'm probably going to be the one of the most likable cast members on this show. Mm-hmm. Um. Former college football player Brandon Hope's individual game will help us out. With the show he's a legitimate athletic, a athletic, athletic threat. Um, I, th- I think he goes halfway, way close to the end. I ho- I hope he does well. Um, like you said, he's he's definitely likable. I, I, I can't I can't I can't go against against my dude. I feel like he's he's the reason why I started these interviews. I mean I. I, I, I called into his show, Real Talk with Brandon, uh, and hand him hopefully back on Spreecast. Um, I think he goes. I think he's gonna do all right. Does he win? Uh, I think he. I think he has to wait another one to win, with all the good talent that we have with the gentleman. Possibly, but he does have the the advantage of finally, you know, not being by uh, not being capped by the. By the burden of having a partner, I mean he's in there by himself. He's he's been pretty unlucky, I would say, and finally he can uh, you know control his own destiny. And at least he can you know if he does get eliminated early or you know uh, you know they don't like him or whatever and they put him in there, he can at least live with the fact that it's going to be him and, and him in there you know alone, and he controls his own his own fate. So that's a. Um, at least there's that, but in terms of how far he goes, I mean, like you said, it's it's tough sledding out there. There's a lot of good competitors in this in this field, but you know, it all depends on on who gets put against who. I mean, if you know for whatever reason, maybe Johnny can Johnny Bananas. There's two Johnny, so I got to be more specific. But if Bananas puts uh, you know puts a group together and sends CT in early or you know Zach or you know, one of these power players, and he wants to try to eliminate someone early, and they pull the name Brandon. I mean, it's 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 gonna suck, but 
that's how this game is played. And uh, we'll, we'll have to see how it plays out. I mean, if it were just a, a power rankings kind of thing in terms of, like, who could do, the, you know, the most um, with less, I, I would say that he's he's up there. He's He's underrated, I would say, and he hasn't been put in positions to really showcase that. So I hope he does well, too. Um, the Brandon D. Nelson's fan Twitter thing was, like, one of my first followers. So uh, I'm a supporter as well. So we'll see how he does. Yeah, he, he's, a, he's a good dude, and uh, uh, I know a lot, of, a lot of the girls, all the girls love him, even even if they won't hook up with him. All <laughs> the girls love him. I feel, I feel like if, if any of his fresh meat partners win, fresh meat uh, cast members win, as far as the three girls go, they won't throw him in. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of the guys, like Leroy, who's from Vegas, um, I feel like I feel like he, I, I feel like like we talked about with uh, what's her name Anissa. I feel like a lot of people won't throw Brandon unless it goes down to the end. Could be, could be. So let's move on to another Brandon, Brandon Swift. We talked about him a little bit. Um, Real World from Real World St. Thomas, his uh, his debut, and that's. I mean, I feel like that's the story here. If you're making your debut against you know from from other than one or two, like, you know, probably like three names. He's in there with some sharks, um, and he's. Are you gonna, looking at his? Are you looking at his picture right now? I'm not. I've I've done, I, I did it earlier, and I don't feel the need to do it again. Like a, what would you call it? A vest, half it, open. It's certainly a vest. Um, it looks like a, a mix between like a boys to men video. I've I've talked I've talked to Swift a couple times, Tim. He's a good dude, but he is. I feel like I feel like he's full of himself, and if Swift ever hears that, I apologize. I just feel like he's full of himself. Like he's he thinks he's the shit, but he really isn't. And that usually doesn't bode too well in these competitions. Um, if you think really highly of himself, especially as a rookie, you're going to get a rude awakening really quick because you're not going to get any respect from these guys. He's going to quickly get uh, thrown into the fire. He goes after somebody in the trailer. I don't know who it was. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure. Like, like, like he was jumping. He he jumped. Like two or three guys are holding him back or something. Yeah. I don't know where. Yeah. It was. So, I mean, the, ch- the challenge is like one notch. The challenge is like one notch above the NBA in terms of like the hold me back association. It's just like yeah. let's try and get into as many hold me back fights as possible. CT is one of the few guys that will actually hit someone, which usually ends up in him getting eliminated. Um, but at least he has the you know the balls to actually not, do something. Not, not today. No, it's uh, those those days are are gone from what it seems. All right, let's uh, let's keep going here. Chet. As, as far as Swift goes, if they want to throw in a rookie first, I just because he has a male ally in Jordan, uh, Johnny Riley, I think Swift goes in first. Yeah. Uh, Does that mean uh, he wins or loses an elimination round? I don't know. It depends. But I mean, if he goes dude, against Preston, definitely, dude's definitely athletic. I'm remembering from pocket, and he was a he was a I think he wrestled in college. So I mean, he's definitely a good athlete, but the dude's got a mouth on him. Yeah, but, like. I mean, you probably you probably know from watching like an episode of Rural St. Thomas. Mm-hmm. If you watch any of it, which I kind of doubt because I know I I remember for you from talking about Battle with uh, Trey Ice Trey. Oh yeah, that's right. I always get that season and uh, San Diego confused just because I didn't really watch either of them. I watched more San Diego than than St. Thomas, but it like you know just in terms of titles and where they were. It's just like, oh, cool, you're in a nice, warm place. Like, I, I can't keep track. Yeah, to, to finish out with, so, I mean, if you ever want to uh, spree cast with Alexandra, I think when it comes to the ladies, and maybe she'll hook up with, uh, who do we say, Jasmine? Yeah, that would be the, <laughs> the worst, best hookup ever. Um, or the best, worst hookup ever. I feel like he tries too hard when it comes to ladies as well. Maybe that's just me. Maybe it's just because his last name is Swift and he thinks he needs to be Swift. Pun intended, absolutely. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen with him. I I hope he does well because, I mean, I've talked to him a few times. He's definitely a good guy. Definitely good guest on shows. But I don't know. 
It's going to be tough to say how it goes, but do moving on to the bow ties. Let's do it. Indeed. And we're not talking about Chevrolets. Uh, we're talking about Chet Cannon. Um, one of my – just it has nothing to do with anything, but he's one of my favorite Twitter follows. Just, like, some of the random, like, 90s pop culture jokes that I'll put up there. Just uh, just funny. Um, he's a great he's – a, he's – He's funny for a soundbite, which I think is why he's here. I think he's pretty well liked. Um, he goes in there and, and he tries really hard. <laughs> and that's usually not, like, the best thing to say in terms of, like, a physical competitor. Um, which he's far from it. Right. Let's be, let's be real. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like him a lot. I'm glad that he's on there just for entertainment value. Um, but uh, that's pretty much where it ends, like, he could, that's, he could that's, get far just uh, by, by yeah. being well-liked. and uh, That's another one that I think guys like Johnny Bananas, guys like CT. I don't, I don't think he's ever done a show with CT. No, he hasn't. Um, this will sure. be his first show. But I know Johnny likes him. And I know yeah. uh, I know guys like him. And uh, uh, we were talking about over under earlier. <laughs> um, are you – what are the – we see the chat hat on episode one. Uh, hi. Um, yeah. Like, you know, my, my, minus minus a thousand. It's uh, good odds. I want to see him have a nice hookup, though. I mean, we saw him briefly with a, what was the blonde, blonde's name, Mandy? Yes. Yeah, we saw him with Mandy for a little bit, but that didn't work out because he sent Mandy in. Which means yeah, he's saying I think that, uh, I think Jessica could be a potential candidate for uh, to hook Chet in, whether Christ, it, whether it's reciprocated or not. The Christians took it up with the Mormon. Well, yeah, I guess. How does that how, how does that work? But as far as um, I mean, he 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 definitely proved himself last uh, season. He was on Battle of Seasons to be a good athlete as far as endurance goes. I mean, he won. He won the endurance as well as the strategy arena. Can't still remember those. Mm-hmm. Um, I think as far as his endurance goes, if it's, if it's an endurance elimination, I would definitely put my money on him. But if it's a physical elimination, depends on who we go against. I don't think he has a chance. Yeah, there's some but, there's some big dudes in this cast. Like 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 you said, um, he's definitely very well liked. Like Brandon, so news. Um, I think he goes a while. Um, I, I saw, I don't know if you saw in the trailer, I think he's in a couple elimination rounds. Wouldn't shock me, um, because eventually you're going to get through the, to, through to the power players uh, if they don't go home in some, you know, fluke way, and, and he's just kind of in the middle there between the, the, you know, the Prestons and the Johnny Bananas of the world. Those are kind of the two polar opposites. He probably falls somewhere in the middle, and that's uh, it's usually not an awesome place to be unless you can... Fly under the radar and get. I think. I think though, Tim. I think he has a five percent chance of making it to the end. Yeah, which I mean, is bigger, which is bigger than most of these cast members. Yeah, I mean, if there were odds and you want to take like you want to take a long t- a long t- a long shot flyer and and try and bet someone, I think he's up there. I think um, Brandon's probably up there too in terms of guys that are that you know, depending on how well they're liked and and who they're aligned with, could uh, could get there just. You know, because uh, we'll, we'll we'll get to that in a bit. So let's just keep going. Uh, real quick, real quick, did you happen to see uh, any of the real world uh, after shows he did on MTV. dot com with uh, one of the drag from um, RuPaul's Drag Race? No, you have to see it. It's so weird. He's pretty good though in that uh, in that after show host capacity. He's not afraid to just like shoot some barbs at people. Um, I, I, I like the new girl though, the girl from Girl Code. She's pretty good. All right. Well, um, nice. CT is next. Everybody knows there's not. It's not like we have, we have much to break down here in terms of like you know. I think his performances kind of speak for themselves. He finally got the monkey off his back. Won a challenge with Wes. I think that goes with the kind of an asterisk. It was it was a stacked team, and uh, I I those are probably the two guys that I've talked the most trash about. Um, for various uh, amounts of recreational and, and competitive drug use, uh, for just being assholes, for just being people that I c- cannot understand why they have fans. But they keep coming on the show. 
So uh, it is what it is. Just, just like Anissa, too. He's been around forever. Yeah, he's been the first, the first, in, the first Inferno. He's he's been his debut. Like holy crap! Yeah, he's been on these shows for like longer than I've been alive. Um, I I, I, I think the big, I, I think Lightning won't strike twice with CT. I agree. I think he doesn't win this challenge. I feel like. They're gonna have. I feel like he's gonna get DQ'd again. I hate to say it. I feel like he's gonna get DQ'd in the elimination round. That's exact. That's exactly right. I mean, if you if you look, because on, honestly, who's 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 gonna beat him in the elimination round? I mean, it depends. I mean, if Zach, if it's Zach, an endurance Zach, thing, Zach might have a chance. Leroy might have a chance. I mean, Johnny's beaten him before, but on his own, I don't think he can. I mean, like, this myth that CT all of a sudden became an endurance athlete because he won the last finale is, it's a false narrative to me. Like, if Johnny was in awful shape for that show, like, if you look at just, like, his body fat content, like, he wasn't prepared. He came for the paycheck. He knew he was going to get far regardless. You know, I'd like to talk to him about it, but he's kind of too, uh, he's too up the ladder to talk to little old me. Um, he, uh... He wasn't prepared for that show, and I think he would freely admit that. And I think now that he just looks better from what I've seen, I think he's in a, in a better frame of mind. I think he's more prepared. I think that last challenge made him hungrier. I don't think CT has a chance against him. And, I, you know, I'm realizing that I'm, I'm talking about this being like a one-on-one thing, but it's not. But if you just look at the potential people that Johnny could be aligned with, like, there's a lot more friends, I mean friends loosely, but people that Johnny likes and that would align themselves with Johnny more so than CT. Like, the numbers heavily favor Johnny, and CT's going to have to fight I think he's going to have to fight through a lot of elimination rounds. Eventually, I think that endurance is going to give out in one way, or he's going to get a puzzle or something, um, or some, you know, super, like, agility tests, like, against some small guy, and, and he's going to get eliminated. Like, he's not... You, do you think he hooks up with Laurel just to make sure that Anastasia's not his partner on Battle Exits 2? <laughs> could be. I um, love I love Bird, but... There could be... Uh, I mean, obviously, obviously he's going to try to do something. I mean, he could have Cook, because there was something about him and Cook. Hell, Nani. I think, I think Nani was another one that... Because yeah. MTV, MTV uses the term X very loosely. Yeah, I mean, CT gets it in. The, I mean, there's no doubting. Like, I, I have respect for that ability. Um, just in terms of a competitor, I think he's super overrated. I think he's very one-dimensional, and I think that gets uh, I guess exposed here. So, um, Dustin Zito. There you How go. go. <sighs> Dustin Zito, obviously the. Uh, one of the more controversial cast members of the last few years. A lot of people have opinions on him. Um, I think he's paid his dues, in my opinion, in terms of, like, people, you know, I think... people. Have, are, you, ever li- have you ever listened to one of my podcasts with Zito? Uh, yeah, I think so. The dude talks. Like, he, like, I don't mind those type of guests, but the dude can talk for days. Yeah. And he's, like, he's very... He, I mean, he's very well-spoken, and he's very... He has a lot to say, so I mean, I, I'm hoping whenever I get him back, uh, if I get him back this season, because I mean, I've spoken to like half the cast. Um, I, I, I hope there's a lot of stuff that we can talk about, and like we like we said in the tra- in the trailer, he does make out with somebody, and it's probably it's probably Emily Fitzpatrick. Is that who we said it was? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. It's definitely not Nani, but um, no, that would be weird. I, th- I think Zito's definitely has the allies. I mean, he has Nani, who obviously Nani's never going to throw him in. He has, um, but like him and Chet, for some reason, are cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I could see him. I could see him getting along with with most of the guys. I mean, he seems like a very you know uh, friendly guy, a guy that you could easily get along with. But it's, at the same time. I think people are also kind of intimidated by him. Maybe not, you know, physically, um, although I think he's a good competitor. Spoiler alert, real quick, with Zito, and this kills me to say this, um, I was listening to one of uh, Bill's uh, Grantland's podcasts with uh, Frank, who they surprisingly brought back after they banned that one episode. (laughs) Yeah, they brought him back a few Um, times. 
him him and a uh, Zeta are actually he actually doesn't have an issue with Zeta, which kind of bums me because I wish him and I wish we could see Dustin doing the whole fist thing right here. Yeah, well, I'm glad because uh, I outside, think I want to see outside chance of making it to the end. I agree. I I, I want to see him do well. Um, I just want him to put that. I'm not even going to say the 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 association, but. He, uh, I want to see him put his past behind him. Like, I, I would assume that would must be the most annoying thing on earth, is to have people continuously bring up your past. Like, everyone wants to live for the now, and everyone wants to strive towards the future. And the fact that he is so anchored by his past is, is, you know, I sympathize. It's that must be awful. That must be rough. And he hasn't been sent home yet. It's true. To point that out. I mean, he got he got hurt on Exodus, and then he went made it all the way to the end on uh, Battle of Seasons. So I don't know. I don't. I like um, with CT. I don't see many people taking him out. I mean, maybe there's something where there's a one out of ten times. Do you remember um, uh, who beat? So well, there was one crazy upset. Um, Katie Doyle be a David on the Inferno. So, I mean, anything oh, is possible right. as far as upsets go. Yeah, and we, there's another one that um, we we will eventually talk about. Well, wait, looks like we skipped him. Yeah, we did We, we did skip him. We skipped him. And speaking of upsets, that transitions us nicely to Kahuta, who makes his uh, epic return from uh, quite a long, a long stay away from the show. Um, it's not like he disappeared. He's pretty active on Twitter and um, pretty uh, visible, but he hasn't been on since the ruins, which was 2009. In uh, which was the even though that challenge the ruins, Tim was so favored the champion side. I actually like that season. Would you? Did you? Did yeah. you enjoy that one? I mean, I've... I mean, I mean, the challenge was only one one freaking challenge. Yeah, but um, I, I wouldn't mind them going back to that format. I mean, I feel like there's a lot more guys. Depending on who wins the season, I feel like there's a lot more guys that you can put on that challenge team that would give them a, I don't want to say a great chance, but a good chance to win. Yeah. But anyways. They can maneuver it to where it would, it would, it would be even. They just have to, you know, they, they can't put like, you know, Johnny, Evan, Kenny, and CT and, you know, all these guys on the same team. You know, they have to balance it. Um, and they can definitely do it. I mean, Leroy still has a one, um, you know, a lot of these guys still haven't won. So, I like Kahut a lot. I think he's got that country, he's got that country uh, strength to him, that country toughness. He's a really nice guy. Like, it's impossible not to like him unless you just really dislike accents, I guess. But do you remember, do you remember uh, Sydney, which I don't know, in my opinion, when he and a girl with the big boobs, Siobhan, got in that fight over the grilled cheese? Yeah, that's right. All right. Well, I guess uh, I guess if you're fighting over sandwiches, then I guess uh, you could dislike him. But like his game is impeccable. Like he went from Kellyanne to like somebody else that I don't remember. Um, who was it? Was it? I don't know, who who's the it, one? It, it, it wasn't anybody on the challenge. It was somebody. She was very beautiful though, from what I right. remember. Right. But I, I remember there was there was somebody else I got a challenge that he didn't quite. He didn't quite like hook up with, but I remember like they kissed like a couple times and whatever. Susie. Yes, that's right. Yeah. All right. Well, kudos I, to him. That's... I, I I think Kahuta wins a couple elimination rounds. I don't think he wins the challenge though. No, I mean he's he's an underdog, and you know. Welcome back, welcome back, though, Kahuta. He, he's definitely an underdog because he's he's small, um, but in terms of like endurance and, and agility and. I think, you know, pound for pound, he's one of the toughest guys. Um, and can, we, can we skip the next guy if you know who I'm talking about? <laughs> well, it's worth mentioning that Frank Sweeney's on the show. And I will say that he went from, like, one of my most disliked guys to not – he's definitely not one of my favorites by any means. But after those, uh, those interviews with Grantland, I think I started liking him a lot more. Like, he seems – his actions seemed a little more reasonable in that kind of format when he was explaining himself and was in a different, you know, in a different environment, um, to, to be redundant. I mean, he, 
the, when, he, when he did the interview that eventually got taken down and the subsequent ones, were, which were a little tamer with uh, Dave Jacoby and, and Juliet Littman, um, he, it just seemed like his choices were a little more rational when he was given a chance to explain them. I mean, I'm not going to defend them. I, I still am not, like, a huge fan of his, but I, I, I respect him a little bit more for, you know, kind of owning up to some of the mistakes he made. And, okay, and, let's start with the positives with Frank. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure I just listed them. <laughs> very, very, very athletic. Yep. Has a great political game. Yep. The negatives are the fans can't stand him. I mean, I was I wasn't all against him on the rural San Diego. I felt like he was very misunderstood when it came to him and Zach, and Zach really didn't give him a chance. But um, he's just a guy that just annoys annoys me. I feel like he's somebody that. Just like Swift, I mean, he's, I think he's probably worse because he's been on two challenges. He's been to the end on both challenges. He thinks he's the shit. And I, I sure. feel like I feel like finally, I mean, he was on one elimination round. I feel like he sees a couple elimination rounds in this challenge. Um, and on it, and can anybody beat him? I mean, there's not that many people that I say on this list that will. I mean, the guy's cast is definitely a cast that is – gonna be some it's gonna be fun to watch but um i don't know frank i don't know frank makes the end it's it's tough to say yeah it certainly is and and, i mean this show is such a toss-up with the format that you just you don't know like you could pick the four best competitors like every everyone that i talk to tim says that he's one of the smartest ones on the show yeah i mean that doesn't surprise me I, i can see that but um yeah, in terms dude, of, like, I, I mentioned... just very emotional. Yeah, very emotional. That's true. Um, Hothead. CT, has, CT and him have issues. Mm-hmm. Um, him and Zach have issues. Mm-hmm. I don't know if Johnny Manan will have his body on this one. I think he will. That he, that just, he doesn't have to. It's just because, you know, Johnny's going to need alliance members, especially because... Frank is so anti CT that Johnny's got to have to. He's not going to have to babysit him as much as he did the last challenge, but he is uh, definitely going to want to have him on his side. He's definitely someone you want on your side, regardless. And um, I think when it comes to just you know competitors, like I mentioned, CT being one dimensional, I think Frank is is very versatile. I think he's got you know very. I hate, I hate to agree with you on that. Yeah, he's he's got you know. Very um, good endurance. He can, you know, he can run. He can jump. He can, you can lift stuff. He can push people. He's got an aggressive side to him. So uh, I'm interested to see how it goes because he doesn't seem as hungry. Just you know, just situationally, he doesn't seem as hungry on this one than he does for the yeah. last two. Did He's we got, see much of him in the trailer? I mean, the trailers have been kind of blood. Yeah, not much, but just if you think, you know, if you know, as I do, like, the situation he's in now, he's, like, he's in a, you know, relationship, he's, I think he's, he's finished, he's finished his schooling, he's got, like, you know, a good, a good setup over there in California, um, it seems like he's got a, you know, his head screwed on right, right now, and usually when that happens, it, it can mean one or two things, like I mentioned with Car Maria, it's like, it can either focus you if you've never, you know, done well, and it can really push you to, to finally win, like, to use, like, you know, Brad as an example, and he finally won. Um, but it could also kind of make you check out a little bit. If you have good things going back at home, you know, the game seems a little less meaningful. So I think that might be the case with Frank, so we'll we'll, we'll see what happens. But let's uh, let's keep it going. Isaac is next. I don't really have anything we, to say about we, him. We can keep this very brief with Isaac. Um, yeah. Can I just bat- talk about his, how God, awful God. his tattoo is? It's so bad. Did Abram do it? it, it, it <laughs> Abram's tattoos might be better. Because I, I know him and Abram are, I think him and Abram are friends, because him, him, Abram, and Kahota, it seems like they're around each other a lot. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe they did do each other's tattoos then, because... Yeah. If you look at his MTV profile picture, you can see it Talk, really clearly. Speaking about his tattoos, his hair is just awful. Yeah, it's something. 
I mean, it, it says here that he's traveled around the world and started a website for backpackers since we last saw him in the Duel 2, which is a long time ago. Who would have known? <laughs> yeah. Um, you see, a, a free spirit with no true alliance. Isaac stands to be the house wild card. To be fair, I remember him on the Duel 2 being pretty funny and having a couple funny one-liners, but uh, he's going to be one of the first eliminated for sure. Um, bottom Bottom three, I would say. Just because I don't think anyone's going to have his back. Like, he hasn't been on in a while. He's not really friends with any of these people, I don't think. Um, he's he's kind of an outcast from the seams of things, and he's got awful tattoos. So, actually, him and CT might get along in that respect. Um, we'll see. What uh, the hell is on his necklace? Is like a dog whistle? I uh, don't ask. Oh my god! Anyway, is, is that, is the, best, that the best moment with Isaac though? Real quick on rural Sydney when he jumped in the fish tank, but <laughs> but, but ass naked, and uh, I mean that was that was pretty hilarious. Yeah, real world Sydney, underrated real world when it comes to providing challenge talent. <laughs> the only one champion is dummy bear. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I use that term loosely. It's pretty much Kahada, Siobhan, Kellyanne, and uh, and Isaac, I guess. And and uh, I don't know if the other two have been on. I don't think so. Anyway. Okay. Yeah, let's move on. He uh, That's about as much Isaac talk as is needed. Um, Johnny Bananas, kind of like CT. I don't know if there's much to say. I think I talked a lot about him when we did talk about oh, CT. Oh, I can't Honestly, with John, him, I mean, I've I've liked him since he debuted, mm-hmm. but uh, last couple seasons, I mean, the the dude the dude brought a freaking bobblehead on Rivals Two. I I love that. I thought it was the funniest I mean, it, thing. Ever. I mean, it's it's funny <laughs> as hell, but you, you, you can't have a bigger ego than bringing a bobblehead. He's got his own Twitter. The the bobblehead has its own Twitter account. It's I think it's hilarious. I think. Uh, he has a he has a freaking banana suit on this one. Oh, that's great! I don't know, I don't know if you saw it in the trailer. I did. Um, um obviously he to the end, but he's a he's a John, first he's a first ballot challenge Hall of Famer. Johnny and bananas, if you ever listen to this, please retire after this one. No you've way! Had, you've, had, you've had a good run. He's got to have I'm, one more I'm, run I'm, the other two with uh, with Evan and Kenny. They've got to have one more run as a threesome. It's too, it's too, it's too, it's too much, it's too much TV gold. Oh, I, I agree. I mean, I, I, I'm kind of sick of Johnny, but Nanyas. That seems to be a, a common, a common thing, but, I mean, he's, to me, like, I, there's always, the way I view these shows is, like, I always make, like, heroes and villains out for myself. It just, you know the guys I like and the guys I dislike, and they always they always seem to be on opposite sides of things just by, um, you know, just by coincidence, if anything. You know, I, I can't stand Wes, and I love Kenny, and, you know, those, uh, you know, that sounded weird because he's a dude, but just as, like, a character on, on my television. Yeah. I, I, always, I always root for Kenny, and I always dislike Wes, and they happen to be, like, mortal enemies. I really like I really like uh, Johnny and I can't stand CT. I really like Evan. I can't stand Nehemiah. And they were like you know they were all like you know rivals. I think actual rivals. So yeah, um, Johnny's obviously going to the end. Does think, he win number five? Does he pass Durrell? I think so. I think I don't. I don't know. I think he's he's got to be the favorite. Um, oh, maybe, obviously. Maybe CT is the favorite in people's eyes. Just be, but you know. It, if Johnny wasn't the favorite, I would bet I would bet him huge. And I think, like I said, he's in better shape. I think the cast, there's more people that are going to be aligned with him than CT, and I think those are going to be kind of the, the lines in the sand. And um, it's, a tough, of, it's a tough field. Yeah, speaking of Johnny, is um, Johnny Riley from yeah. Portland. Um, you can take great, this one because I literally know nothing about him. Great, great dude. I've talked to him a couple times. Um, unfortunately, him and Avery broke up, which I was very saddened by. Um, I, I liked them both. So, I mean, maybe that will work in his favor as people getting to know him as Johnny, not as Johnny and Avery. But just leaving a quick, in a quick 30 seconds, I feel like athletically, 
Oh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Compared to the other two male roommates, obviously he's he's the weakest one from Portland. Um, we'll just have to wait and see on him. It seems like he's gonna have a good time and in uh, Uruguay. I feel, I feel like he's gonna be like one of the lives of the parties in the house. Whether that means he lasts a while, whether that means he does he goes home early, I don't know. But it's it's cool on here. I'm he's making his debut. All right, that'll be uh, the uh, the Johnny Riley breakdown. Because um, I literally have nothing to say other than he's a I rookie think, and he's... I think he hooked up with somebody on this one too, which annoys me because, like I said, I'm a big fan of Avery, and yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, Jordan, his, uh, his been cast member, the who he hooks up with? Who Jordan? Yeah. Um. I mean, I think I pegged I pegged somebody, didn't I? Um, no, but there's somebody that I, I've been hearing that he hooks up with. Well, I, I haven't heard those uh, those rumors, but I'm sure whoever it is is a uh, is a good looking good looking woman. Um, he seems to have uh, quite the uh, I don't know I don't know what it is. I mean, I guess he's a good looking you, dude. I guess you, he's an athletic you either- dude. You either lo- like like a lot of those Portland cast members, you either love them or you hate them. Yeah. I mean, before I, I spoke with Jordan, I, I honestly was very indifferent about him. Uh, he started drama for no apparent reason whatsoever on most of those episodes, with exception of the whole Naya thing. I mean, not those two were – I can't wait to see if those two have any interaction on this one, but – um. He, he he's gonna do very well in this one. Mm-hmm. I feel like um, I feel I I feel like when it comes to people that get thrown in, I feel like people are gonna throw him in because they don't like him. I feel like he's gonna create a lot more enemies than friends, unfortunately. Could be, and I'm interested to see where he draws the line between CT and Johnny. Um, maybe he just stays neutral, and usually when that happens, it it's the ultimate death sentence. Um, he went through. I think he went through his trial by fire last season, so I don't think he will be put in as many eliminations. I think both John and CT realized that he is an elite well, competitor. Well, well, with the whole draw, Tim, with the whole if we have to go through the draw, I mean, you could see people going more eliminations than expected. That's true, and Johnny and CT, Johnny and CT, one elimination round too. I guarantee you both of them will see one that, this season. Right. And it could be against each other for all we know. I mean, it's uh, it's interesting. But Jordan, I, Jordan, I think, is is the house, is the uh, dark horse in this challenge. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even know if he's really even a dark horse at this point. I think last year he he's like the uh, the Pacers. Like, he... he Came out, nobody really knew what to expect, and and he uh, he dominated. And now, now you know, all of a sudden, we come to the next season later, and he's um, he's you know one of the number one seeds, I'd say. Yeah, he's um, he's going to be tough to to forecast because I like you said, I think he could rub people some the, uh, some people the wrong way. Oh, he's going to do it to a lot of people. I guarantee you that. Yeah, and you know who he hooks up with also depends. You know, if, like, the, if he hooks up with the, a power player, the dude is never quiet. Yeah, if he hooks up with a power player like Laurel, for instance, like maybe that could change the dynamic. Like maybe you know that would either keep him around or get him eliminated quicker. I'm not sure. It's just a lot of a lot of variables when it comes to uh, to old Jordan. But well, we got three guys left now. Um, we yeah. probably only need, we probably only need to talk about two of them. Yeah, can we but, just get Preston out of the way? Like, okay, Preston's on the show. He's, what what co- what colors? Is this Still lavender, yeah, it's still lavender. Yeah, um, that's all we need to know. Yeah, Shelton Benjamin makes his appearance once again, but now he's got a different color here. He goes from Cisco to Shelton Benjamin. Yeah, pretty much any. Yeah, never mind. I'm not gonna say it. Kind of goes without saying. Um, yeah, let's talk about let's talk about Zach first. Let's leave Leroy for last because he, he's awesome. he's with pressing though real quick. He's he's gonna go further than we want him to. I disagree. I think he'll okay, be eliminated first. Me, meaning, meaning episode two. That's okay. what I meant. Okay, fine. <laughs> episode two or three. Like I said, I feel like with this format, if uh, Swift doesn't win the first 
McDonald's, I feel like he's going in first. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, but um, talking about Thor, you you talked to Zach before, good, and as well as me, good guy. You think? I think so. Um, I was. I, I like like. I have a weird dynamic with him because I talked to him before he was on the challenge. I think I talked yeah. to him when he was still a real worlder, and that first challenge that he did, like he just. I've said this so many times before, but I'm just going to say it again for some new listeners, potentially. He just seemed like Frank's lap boy, and it really, like, I lost a lot of respect for him. Especially he, um, when it came to that whole Dustin fight, because I doubt Frank would have gone up, gone in, gotten in Dustin's face had yeah, that been behind and him. And I think also that contributed a lot to why I didn't like Frank, is because Frank, like, you know, because he had this, you know, almost like this bodyguard, like a Shawn Michaels diesel kind of thing. He felt the need to to run his mouth way more because he knew he had that, that muscle behind him. And he and that's exactly what Zach was. He was just like the quiet enforcer that didn't say anything, but as soon as Frank got into some trouble, like he would all of a sudden stand up and flex, and all of a sudden, you know, his presence would be felt. The next season, I think he was a little more independent, and I gained a little more respect back for him. He went a little bit psycho when it comes to the, the camera crew and, and all that, and, and the temper tantrum he threw after he got eliminated. Certainly, you know, once again, the respect level dropped. So he's been he's been all over the place. Um, this season is going to really kind of solidify my opinion on him. I'm going in with an open mind, um, but he left a lot of people... He, he soured a lot of people on him, I think, when he got eliminated and threw, like, a temper tantrum. Or, well, he thought he, he thought he won the elimination and then got disqualified and then looked Just like with like Jordan, though, Tim, I feel like Zach, especially if Frank's on banana side, I feel like Zach's going to be one that gets thrown in a lot because people don't like him. He is someone that I could see, like, he could be... CT's like right hand man. I could see that alliance like almost like a um Zach would be very smart to do that. A Hulk Hogan on the Macho Man Randy Savage thing. Like the the the, the mega powers unite with those two. I mean in terms of like yeah. physical competitors, you know, those two are, are you know some of the top. So I think it would behoove both of those two to to do that and I think like I could see their personalities gelling. Um, what about him and Jordan in this alliance? Because I talk about those two probably being like the big targets. Yeah, I mean, if, after after the rookies go out, if those I mean, two I mean, want to I mean, create like a third a, faction, alliances go like like I said. This format takes away alliances for the most part because every time sort you're of. Possibly, you're possibly on a new team. Like I said, there's teams of four, teams of six, partners, individuals. Right, but I mean, in just term, in terms of voting, like the, they'll you know you could. If, if Frank wins, I guarantee you he throws in Zach. If if it's late if it's late in the game, if you if you if you had if you had to pick between Zach and a couple others, I think he throws in Zach. But yeah, I think Frank I think I think Frank has a little animosity towards Zach, and it's probably likewise. Yeah, um, he's way more of a threat Rose. than say you know Johnny from Portland or Isaac or whoever. Yeah, I, I like his chances. It's good, but let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's end it. We've been on for a while. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's wrap it up here let's with, uh, with Roy. Leroy, Roy Lee. Um, definitely a fan favorite, and uh, for good reason. I mean, just genuine is the first word that comes to my, my head when I think of Leroy. Just, you know, totally genuine. He ain't going to bullshit anybody. He's not going to backstab anybody. He's going to be straight up. And uh, he's an awesome competitor. I mean, I think his his endurance certainly needed a little bit of work. I think we saw that in the elimination round where he, where he got eliminated. Um, he did have Naomi with him, if my memory serves. So that certainly wasn't, you know, an awesome uh, – or no, that was – I'm thinking like two challenges ago. He had uh, Ty with him, right? Yeah. So, I mean – Ty is the uh, the antithesis of endurance, unless he's partners with Emily. <laughs> um, yeah. So Emily makes everybody better, and um, you know, I think Leroy is is. Def- I mean, you talk about dark horse. I mean, that's probably not the word to use. Wingbodywatches dot com. Plug in that real quick. There you go. Um, I, I don't mind any any Leroy related plugs. Yeah. He um. 
I think he's in the final four. I mean, that's probably what we're transitioning to it, you know, next, but he's in my final four. I've, okay, okay, because I'm reading a lot of these uh, little bios. I've never won a challenge because of me. I'm my biggest competitor. That yeah. that shows how humble he is. I mean, he doesn't sure. blame his losses on Naomi or on Ty or on Mike. Mike, I mean, he says, I'm my own biggest, I'm my biggest competitor. And self-preservation is my motivation when I want, I want it all. Aided by doing that and quick, quick wit, Leroy hopes to keep his hands clean to make it to the end by avoiding confrontation. Yeah, he does that pretty well. I don't, I don't see a hookup with him this season, though. I don't uh, think he hooked up with anybody. I, I could see, I could see, I could see him doing it. Um, I mean, maybe. He rekindles it with uh, Teresa. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. He, I, don't know. I mean, he, he always he's always looking for a little little side action, um, which is another reason I like him because you know he, he he doesn't get his uh, he doesn't get his you know his, his his goals mixed up with it. You know he's he's going to be honest with himself. But final four, Preston. I'm just kidding. Yeah, right. Preston, uh, Isaac. Uh, no. Um, I'm gonna go Johnny, obviously. Um, I'm gonna be biased on the, on my final. That that's totally fine. <laughs> Johnny, Frank, Leroy, Jordan. Done. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Johnny, of course, because there's no way he doesn't make the finals. Um, Leroy, Jordan. A combination between Brandon. Zach, Frank, or Dustin. That I mean, the reason why I've been giving you so many names. I was going to say, so like, final, pretty much the, the whole final. cast. Yeah, as far as the finals, as far as because I mean, we don't know how many people make it to the end, yeah. and this whole random draw thing is like a whole big dynamic that we're going to be shocked to go into every elimination round. Right. I, I that's how I feel. Like I mean, I mean, I feel like. Like I said with the guys, the uh, first guy to go in will probably be Swift. And with the whole draw, we could see Swift versus Frank, which would be very weird. But we could see Swift versus Frank. Like with the girls, for example, um, I don't know. I think Jessica, unfortunately, will probably be the first one to go in. I, 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 th- I, think, over the, I think over the two rookies, I think that will pick Jessica to go first because they feel like – unless they want to pick threats. I don't know, I don't know how they're going to do this – like the winners, you're gonna pick the somebody strong or somebody weak. That's what how, that's what we're gonna have to see Thursday night. You know, because it's 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 tough to say. Because if I if I were to win the first challenge, for example, say if say if I was Johnny and I was on the opposite team of CT, do I stir the pot early and throw CT in? I don't think I don't think he does. But you never know. Yeah, I mean, I think. It might, it might be the better option to just throw a powerful player in right away because maybe you get the draw of another power player and then you, you know, eliminate one right off. Um, that's one of the more interesting kind of things that we've seen in the challenge in a while. And, you know, for all we know, they could switch up the format halfway through. Like they have a couple seasons, uh, you know, or what was it? Was it last season that you know, the, or the season before, where the girls, you know, picked the guys and the guys picked the girls? Like, yeah, we we, we just don't know what tricks they have up uh, up their sleeve for us. And what what, what the listeners got to do though is um, there's a lot of stuff free on, on teams right now for the challenge, which is different rivals. You you got to download the first one and the rules more early than. Um, I mean, they had a whole bunch of the cast members explain it, and it's uh, it's a lot more clear. I mean, I'm still I'm still confused about how this is going to work. And I mean, we've been on for about almost two hours now. Yeah, I mean, if you hadn't if you hadn't explained it to open, I I would probably be just as as lost. Um, <laughs> I barely knew the I barely understood it in the first place. Um, who's um, give me one guy and one girl that are going to surprise some people? Um, that's a good question. I would say I would say Kahuta 
um, because I think he'll stick around a while because he's well liked. But I think if he does go in the elimination, got to gotta be around long enough to hook up with Latina, uh, Latina Heat. Yeah, for sure. And is she is she Latina or? Is... I believe so. Yes. Oh no, she's a. Oh crap! I'm trying to go back to her season. She's Cuban. Yeah. Okay. Well, whatever. Close enough, as far as I'm concerned. And girls, girls, girls. You thinking Jemmy? Yeah. Our rookie, you want to go with Latoya or Naya? No. But I think I think those two are going to be good. I probably would go Jemmy just because. Yeah. You know, I think I think I picked her as my fly under the radar chicks, and and that's a big factor. I mean, if you can just scrape by, like people have gotten to the final just by scraping by, you know, so. Yeah, she's a candidate for that for sure. For me, the guys, I, it's hands down going to be Chet with his with his bow tie, with his glasses, with his hat. I feel like Chet's going to last a while. Uh, last a while, at least I hope. Because I mean, Chet's a funny. For uh, sure. Um, and then for the girls, um, probably Jemmy, either Jemmy or uh, not. Okay. Well, it should be a fun one though, man. If you if you ever want me to come back on, I'm definitely more than I'm more than happy to do so. Yeah, I got sure. I got about another month left in school, and then I'm going on vacation for a week. But in the meantime, probably probably you you could probably even get me on in a couple weeks uh, once I have to. If you want to break down the episode or bring somebody on, I'm definitely more than happy to yeah, that's, help you out. That's... Do you have that technology to bring to bring three people in? Yeah, um, I can. We you know. The audio audio potential is limitless. Um, <laughs> I had I had one podcast where I brought um, four of my well I guess it was three because one of them was with me but three other um, friends of mine and we did like a big movie draft roundtable and then it didn't end up recording and it was awesome it was so yeah such... I, I, I was just asking because I know on Skype Skype if, unless you pay for it it's only like one person yeah. Well, we don't want to don't, don't don't give away all my secrets, but um, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I definitely want to have some more uh, challenge guests on this during the season. This is the first season where I'll have the website up and and running. So definitely got gonna to, do some got, more got stuff. Gotta get Ace on, man. I know Ace would be willing to come on. Yeah, for sure, and uh, talk some challenge with her. Maybe get Susie back. She could, you know, watch an episode or whatever, and we'll we'll talk about it or do a halfway mark. I don't know. It's uh, it's gonna be a good one. So thank you everyone for listening. Thank you Kirk for uh, for jumping on with me here, and uh, everybody go check out the links I'll leave down in the description. Let me let me throw in a couple plugs real quick if do you want to. Um, at CCUA Kirk on Twitter, Andrew Kirk one on Instagram. Um, Going to plug my boy JG from the Royal Explosions watches. I'm wearing one right now. Uh, crazewatches.com, 5% of profits. Go to Cancer Foundations, which is absolutely awesome. Tim, got to get your – it's amazing. They're, they're, pretty, they're, pretty, they're pretty awesome, dude. Cool. But um, that's about it. Thanks, Matt. All right, no problem, man. Thank you for everyone for listening. Enjoy the challenge, and uh, we'll be back soon. Go check out some more content we got on uh, TKOTalk.com. I got a, a WrestleMania preview up there now, which might be dated by the time you uh, listen to this, but you can see what I thought about it and then make fun of me about how wrong I was. Do you and have the network? Do you have the network? Of course. Yeah. Join I, the network. I'm, I'm not I'm not it because I, I want to have a social life. I feel like <laughs> if, I, if I get the network, man... I'm not going to have one. Yeah, it certainly uh, has, has, has taken a bit of a hit in the last month or so, but it's going to be nice having to, uh, you know, getting to watch Mania up there and, and the, on the screen HD and, and not have to worry about, you know, pay-per-views and whatnot. And I'm pretty much dedicating my whole day tomorrow to just watching old matches uh, in the lead-up and then eventually the show itself. So probably going to do a, a recap or maybe a live journal um, of uh, of WrestleMania, so keep it locked to the website for that. I'm sure I'll have something up there, and uh, there's some other great content on there as well. You can go check out the Suzy podcast if you haven't done so already. That's back in the archives. That's that's timeless. No matter how old it is, it's uh, always going to be a good listen. 
Thanks, guys, once again, and I will talk to you soon. Later.